Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is Michael Savage. Well, let me tell you what's going on in the Savage Nation today. At about 30 after the hour, we're going to have a former DEA undercover agent, the bravest, toughest man I ever met on the show to talk about the drug war and if it's still actually going on, and a little bit about the Sean Penn case. That's Mike Levine. And right now, i got to tell you what happened 10 minutes ago because it's a big story. I learned 10 minutes ago that I won in the U.S. Supreme Court. You see, a former radio individual who had been vying against me for years, tying me up with all sorts of legal tricks, lost at every level and took it to the Supreme Court. And, of course, the Supreme Court refused to hear it. Well, I don't know that this is related in any way. I doubt that it is. But uh, he lost in the Supreme Court against yours truly yesterday. Of course, still hasn't paid me one nickel of the money that was assigned to me after five years of, of a legal battle and a million dollars in fees. I haven't collected one nickel. And then someone sent me this story. Grant's past man jailed for allegedly assaulting his wife in front of their two children. KAGL Radio, Sam Marsh. A Grant's past man was arrested for domestic assault. I should say allegedly assaulting his wife because at this point it's only allegedly. Uh, a Grant's past man was arrested for allegedly assault his wife. And a following a report, according to the Oregon State Police, Troopers responded to a silent alarm in a 9-11 hangar from a residence at the 700 block, blah, blah, blah. Troopers said they immediately determined there had been a domestic disturbance, and they placed 51-year-old Mark Masters into custody for assaulting his wife in front of their two children. Masters was charged with felony domestic assault, menacing, and harassment. Mark Masters was lodged in the Josephine County Jail. Now, of course, he, he has not been found guilty in a court of law. As you know, we live in a very fair nation. And as you well know, lawyers are the most honorable amongst us, and they always do the right thing. And as you well know, justice is very inexpensive in America. After all, take my case. Tied up for over five years, haven't collected a nickel, cost me a million dollars, but hey, at the end, justice prevailed. You know, it leads me to ask what would happen with an individual listening to this show who has gone to court or avoided court for fear of the costs because he's been intimidated by a bully in his life. That's the real question today. I want you to call with lawyer or court horror stories because I doubt there's a single individual in this audience, poor or rich alike, who does not have such a story to tell. Have you ever lost a court case even though you were, let us say, right? I'm sure you have. Have you ever been bullied into not even fighting a court case because the individual who dragged you into court had more money than you? I'm sure that you have. And that's what I mean. You see, there is justice in America, but it's very, very expensive. Now, along the line of my case, and I've got to go into it, you can call me on your court or lawyer horror stories at 855-407-282 if it's about you. And then I want to talk about me for a moment. I want to show you what's involved. And I've got to be very very cautious in what I tell you. You see, many years ago, I was with a radio syndicator, and I had an offer from another company, a legitimate offer from another company. And this radio syndicator didn't want me to leave because I was, frankly, the only star he had. And he did everything he could to hold on to me. And the fact was, I went into arbitration with him because it was in my contract. And after years, and I think $800,000 at the time, Three arbitrators found in my favor, and then I left that syndicator, and the rest is history. But that's not where the legal story ends. That's just where the legal story continues. The syndicator then took the case, even though he lost in arbitration, with three arbitrators after two years. 
He took it to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I'm sorry, to the, the U.S. District Judge. The U.S. District Court had a judge who was appointed by Barack Obama, nonetheless. And he figured, well, hey, what the heck? It's a liberal court. Savage is going to get smashed. What he didn't know is that although the, the woman, the judge in the district court, had been appointed by Barack Obama, and although she was an Hispanic, she basically threw them out of the courtroom because they tried to smear me in ways you could never imagine. She was appalled by it. And so they lost at the district court level. So they took it to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the most liberal court in America, again trying to overturn the ruling of the arbitrators. That cost me another $100,000. The, the liberal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals again ruled in my favor. You'd say, well, at least it's over now. No, it's not over. I want to show you what people do in this country. He then took it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Maybe he knew that they'd never hear it because they rarely hear cases that are uh, of this small magnitude, to be very honest with you. But, you know, it's a big deal to me because it's five years of my life. And I don't want to talk about the sleepless nights. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about justice and injustice in America. And I want you to look at the ruling, Supreme Court of the United States, title, The Original Talk Radio Network, Inc., Petitioner, versus Michael Savage, October 19th, 2015, United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, July 17th, 2015 was the decision date. So, so on October 15th, there's a petition to the Supreme Court. On December 2nd, 2015, it is distributed for conference to the nine Supreme Court justices. They hear it, the nine justices read it, and yesterday, January 11th, 2016, the petition was denied, meaning my victory was upheld. Now, I'm not saying that this is tied into the news article of the very same night Grant's past man jailed for allegedly assaulting his wife in front of their two children, but it's quite... Uh, interesting to me that both of these events occurred on the very same day. But I don't want to keep it to a story about me. I want to show you something about life in America. When I was very young, I avoided lawyers. I avoided courts. I paid every traffic ticket to avoid anything to do with the law because I knew that it was a mess. If you got involved with the courts, remember, I came from a, I would say, I wouldn't say we weren't poor, like in the sense of living in poverty. We were lower middle class at the time, okay? Two-year-old car, no vacations, uh, one car in the family, that kind of thing. And the thing is, we didn't have lawyers. We didn't go to lawyers. We didn't go to court. We avoided court. We were those kind of people because it was for rich people to fight in court. Well, as I got older and I became a writer, I found out that I needed lawyers. Uh, book ideas were stolen. Publishers did things that were astonishing and appalling. And I found out that you needed lawyers in America to survive at any level above the, the, I would say, the most menial level. But even at the most menial level, people need lawyers today because the society is so crippled by the law. The fact of the matter is we have a lawyer for president who has crippled America by getting around the law. I don't want to go into that right now because that's an obvious fact. I've written books about uh, getting around the law when you're a lawless president. But I want to ask you to call the Savage Nation, having given you a little thumbnail sketch of what happening, what's happening in the old savage world today. And you can call me with your court horror stories today at 855-407-282. And again, at the half hour point in this hour, we will have former DEA undercover agent extraordinaire Mike Levine, who's written some amazing books over his career. In fact, many of you may remember Mike Levine from the 90s when I was a uh, wee lad as a talk show host here on KSFO, a local show. I put on the Compassionate Conservative events, the progenitor to the Tea Party. Uh, those events were phenomenal. And I used to invite other speakers as warm-up acts, so to speak, which is not diminishing them in any way whatsoever. They were great people, every last one of them. Some of them have gone on to Congress, etc. So Mike Levine was my hero at the time. I've lost touch with him, and he was on stage, and I met him. We had dinners down in Sausalito at then my favorite restaurant, and we got to know each other. We'd hang out. We'd go on stage. And Mike was a certifiable, amazing human being. He was a guy, well, I'll tell you more about it at 12.30, because I don't want to give you a build-up, and then he's not on until uh, 30 minutes after the hour. Right now, I just want to focus on court horror stories. And before I take my first break, let's begin with the first caller up there. I don't know what it's about, but it's Bruce, and I'm sorry, it's Scott on KLIF in Dallas. Go ahead, please. Scott, what's on your mind? What's your court horror story? 
Michael, my court horror story was I was sued by a very large multi-level marketing company, um, and the only thing I was guilty of was after I found out that I was being ripped off, I was trying to educate the people that were still being ripped off, and this company sued me. Oh, wait, so you were one of the people caught up in the Ponzi scheme, and you tried to blow the whistle on them, and what, they, they shut you up with a lawsuit? Well, they tried to shut me up with a lawsuit. I had a very good attorney, and I ended up settling out of court because after about a year and a half of the lawsuit being open, it was very apparent that this company, even though they sued me, had no intent to go into an actual trial. They just wanted to drain me financially. Of course, that's a tactic of, that's a tactic of a large company versus a small individual. However, when it's a small individual who knows he's right, and he's got any capacity to fight, I recommend that he fight. Because most of these companies that are doing this are bullies. They're just using the threat of a lawsuit to intimidate you. So how did you settle? Did you win or lose? I won the settlement, Michael. Um, in fact, I've got the settlement on my website. If you'd like to have the address, the, the listeners can actually go and read the settlement. Why not? Go ahead. I'd go in and give it out. I don't have nothing to gain or lose by it. Go ahead. Okay, the uh, the website is called, and this is all one word. I don't want to get involved in your lawsuit. I thank you very much. And I'd rather not avoid, I'd rather avoid company names for obvious reasons, okay? I don't need more trouble than I already have. <laughs> I, I want to hear your court horror story, folks, but I don't want to become part of your court horror story, folks. Back in a minute. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, all rise. You have now entered the uh, Supreme Court of the Savage States of America. We are talking about your legal or court horror story. I don't think there's a listener alive who is listening to this show over the age of 15 who doesn't have a court horror story. I don't think there's a person in America not tainted by the legal system. And we're talking about it for obvious reasons. It touched me today because after a five-year legal battle, I finally won in the U.S. Supreme Court. I didn't take it there. I was very happy to leave it at the arbitration level where I had spent 800 and some odd thousand dollars and was awarded nearly a million dollars by them for withheld monies, by the way. Want me to get into that? You can look it up anyway. Not one penny of that money has ever arrived in my pocket. Where is it? Well... I'll let you try to find it. That's the legal system that we have. If you have the money, you can get away with murder in this country. Ask any drug dealer. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about you. I like to hear your cases, frankly. And I, I even want to hear from drug dealers on the Savage Nation. You're uh, welcome to call. You're a free person. And uh, we want to hear your uh, courtroom horror stories. I think this is amazing. I love to hear this kind of stuff. So let's go to New York City, the land of the New York lawyer. Susan on WABC, what's your lawyer horror story? Well, I'm the plaintiff in a uh, harassment and discrimination suit for $100 million. And this case... Whoa, 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 slow down. You're suing someone for $100 million? My lawyer that I am. Okay, you want to tell us what the case is about without naming the individual? Yes, it's a harassment and a discrimination suit. And this case received uh, an enormous amount of publicity that headlines in the post. It had uh, enormous coverage. And this was nine years ago. My what, were you, wait, wait, what was the case? Who what, were you, what were you so harassed that it's worth $100 million? Well, I was uh, violated at my job. I was discriminated at, for work. Um, how, were you I, how were you violated? I was spit at kicked at, punched, and uh, work was taken away from me uh, by... Why was, th why was that done to you? Was it done based on your gender or your race? It was done, done, done to me because I was an American citizen and I was uh, legal and I had a license and I was competing against people who were not only illegally in the country, they didn't have licenses and uh, they were making tons of money because they were involved in illegal... Um, and unethical uh, practices, whereas I was not. So you were attacked by you were attacked by the employer.